Howdy folks. So we've moved on. We are going to work in Blender, which is a 3D modeling and uh, animation program. Blender is quite different than Adobe Illustrator. So uh, there's a few things we're going to have to do completely differently uh, in terms of what you press on the keyboard and uh, how you use the mouse and all sorts of things. So uh, we'll just get started and I'll tell you about some of those things. But first, before we even get started, there's a few golden rules of Blender that you need to change before you even get started in the program. The first thing we're going to do, golden rule number one, is that Blender um, is set up differently than most computer programs that you've used. And one of the different things about the computer program is its mouse buttons work opposite to what you might have used before. So we're going to go ahead and change that so it works a bit more like any other program that you use because you're probably used to using them already. So we are going to go here to file up here and we're going to go down to user preferences. That'll pop up there. And under user preferences, we're going to hit this top tab here up to input. And then we're going to change this input to select with left. And then we're going to go down here and save that. Once we've done that, we can uh, use the program as normal by moving this cursor around with the uh, right mouse button and selecting things with our left mouse button as we would in any other program. So we have a cube in the center of our grid and uh, that is going to, we're going to play around with that in just a little bit, but first we should probably talk about the second rule of Blender. And the second rule of Blender is that Blender is super complicated and has all these panels around here. It does uh, animation as well as 3D modeling. And we're only going to touch about 10% or less of what Blender can actually do. But the trouble with having all of these things on the side here is that it's really easy to make uh, an input error with Blender, press the wrong button at the wrong time, and uh, lose everything that you've done. You might have spent hours of work on it, and you might just lose everything. So the second golden rule of Blender is to save, save, save often. Always save your work. Control S, save it in your folder, keep saving it, save it all the time, save it every time you do anything in Blender because it's a very high chance that you're going to lose everything or mess the interface up in some way so that you won't be able to do anything. So you'll just have to quit the program and start again. And the easiest way to do that is just to save, 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 save. So you're always uh, one step away from just loading up what you did last. So that's the second rule of Blender. The third rule of Blender is that because Blender is a 3D modeling program, we actually need to think a little bit about how the computers deal with 3D. Computers deal with 3D uh, by making the computer work to model a 3D environment, and we want to get our graphics card for the most part. The graphics card to do the work instead of the computer, the CPU. Uh, because graphics cards these days, if you have a modern computer, if your computer is older than, um, you know, three or four, or maybe even like five or six or seven, if your computer is older than that, then don't worry about this. But if your computer is modern, uh, you need to change this here where it says Blender Render. And we're going to change that to Cycles Render before we even do anything. So change that. So that's the third rule. First rule, input. Second rule, save. And third rule, change this to Cycles Render. Now there is a fourth rule, which is don't add objects in edit mode, but we're not going to talk about that in today. We're just going to talk about that in the next lesson. Okay, so just cycles render, and now we're ready to start. Okay, so let's think about where our perspective is. We're looking at this cube here. What if I wanted to get closer to that cube? I would use the mouse wheel. There we go, mouse wheeling into that cube, which is on a mouse wheel over there. I can't mouse wheel over there. It's just going to go straight to the center of where I am. So I need to orbit the camera around. I do that with the middle mouse button. The middle mouse button allows me to see under and over things and around. The middle mouse button is very handy for uh, moving around. But if we want to shift over so that we can see something on the side, 
maybe there's something over here we want to see and our camera's just going around the middle the whole time we're gonna want to shift and mouse button that pans our camera kind of like in uh in illustrator when you have that hand tool that pans through it we're gonna do the same thing in blender uh, with the shift and middle button. Now your middle button might be your mouse scroll wheel, might have to hold that down. I have a middle button on my mouse, but my mouse is probably better than yours. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, uh, we are, we've, we're pretty set here. We can orbit around, we can shift around, we can zoom in and out. So we've got our camera all set up where we want to. So let's do some stuff. Let's just zoom out a little bit so we can see this here. And we're gonna select our cube. See how it turns orange around there. Gives us our axes here. We'll talk about our axes in a, in a little bit. And we are going to press G to grab our cube. There we go. We've grabbed our cube. We can put it in different places. We can let it go here. We can grab it and bring it back. So we practice that, putting it up here, grabbing it and putting it back down. But let's say it's pretty imprecise. Our mouse is working usually in a two-dimensional way and we have a three-dimensional space. So if we want to move really carefully in the three-dimensional space, we can grab something and then we can lock it to a certain axis. So as you know, in three-dimensional space, we have three axes and they are called X, Y, and Z. And when you press X, Y, and Z while grabbing something, you only move it in that axis. So this is the Z axis here, moving up and down. And this is the X axis, and this is the Y axis. So if I wanted to let it go there, and then grab it again, bring it up, but I don't want to freeform it, I just want a Z axis over there, and then I want to move it slightly along that axis, and we can do that precisely. And you see there, when I did that, when I wasn't in the correct mode, it brought up different tools by accident. That's a good chance for me to show you how finicky Blender can be. So if I press Z when I'm not grabbing an object, it's going to go to wireframe mode, which might really confuse you at first. And press Z to get rid of that. But if I press X, it wants me to delete the object. And helpfully, my mouse button goes right over top of the delete button. So it's really easy to delete something that you spent a long time making. So you got to be really careful with Blender. Like I said, the Second rule of Blender, save, save, save. Okay, so that's grabbing an object. Uh, we can also make an object bigger or smaller. So this is called the scale tool. S for scale tool. So we can make it really, really big. We can zoom out and we make it really, really big. But why don't we want to do that? That's a really big cube. To us, it looks exactly the same. It's still just a cube. But to Blender, this cube is enormous all of a sudden. And Blender doesn't work in sizes. Like if you look at this grid, each of these is not like one meter by one meter. It's not like SketchUp that way. It has no scale, but the scale is relative. So you don't want to make something too big because it uh, this grid will become useless to you and it won't help you at all. And the grid is there to help you. So just keep your objects scaled to where they kind of make sense on the grid. Grab it, move it up there, so we're gonna teach you the next tool. Okay, so that's the S scale tool. But like I said before, your X, Y, and your Z buttons will work on your scaling too. So if we press the X button, we can start scaling it this way. So let's make it really flat. There we go. Now if we looked around that, looks not like a cube anymore, which is kind of neat. Let's pan and look at what it looks like, kind of like a book or something like that. And then if we scale it again with the S tool and we press the Z button, we can make it really tall or really short. And then we press scale and the Y button, we can make it really thin. So we've made like a stick or something like that. So that's the X, Y, and Z button when applied to scaling. We can change the shape of something. Okay, let's just grab that and move it over here, move it up here, and then we'll teach you the last tool here for moving and manipulating objects is the R button. What do you think that does? It rotates. So here it is flying around space here, but again, I can lock it to an axis. So there I am rotating only in the Z axis or only, I'm scaling it there, only in the X axis or only in the y-axis. 
Well, that's how we rotate something in space. And so now we have this sort of stick floating in space here. But let's say I don't like this stick anymore. I can delete it. There I go. It's gone. So how do I get something back? Okay, so let's talk about adding objects. So if I go and press Shift A, it gives me a whole list of things to add. Now, in this class for our program, we're not going to add most of these things. There are a lot of fancy stuff here. We're going to be playing mostly with this mesh, these different various meshes. So if I want to add a cube again, I can add a cube. Now, why did it go over there? It's way over there. Why did, why did a cube go over there? Well, the cube is going to go, or whatever we're going to go, is going to add to this cursor. We're going to place the cursor with our right mouse button. So now if I want to add something over there, let's say if I want to add an icosphere, now I have a cube and a sphere. I have two objects now. You can see this one's highlighted because it's orange. If I click on that one, that one's highlighted too. If I want to select everything, I press the A button. If I want to deselect everything, I press the A button again. Now you'll see floating in the sky are these two other things I haven't talked about yet with the A button here. This is a light source and this is a camera. Don't worry about those now. Uh, you could delete them if you wanted to. We can add them back later, but for now, just leave them there. We're just going to deal with the objects for now. Okay, so we've added things. Shift A, and we can grab our icosphere, and we can put it over here, and we can grab it again, and lock it to the x-axis here, flying it in and out. I want to put this cube underneath this object. You can see it's kind of hard to work in 3D space, so it's going to take some getting used to to put things in the right place and there we go we've made a sort of trophy that's pretty neat and uh, we can take that and we can scale it on the z-axis and make it kind of look tall and that's pretty cool and that is blender the intro